to Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 26, starting with verse 24. I had a whole nother word prepared for the day, and God sent a change, and, and I'm like, come on now, not right now. After all that work for all last week and the week before, you mean now? Yes, now. So I'm, I'm trying to be obedient. Sure, just work with me as I figure it out as he downloads it in my spirit. And I grab hold of some of my notes. Matthew chapter 26, looking at verse 24, all the way down to 29. Amen. I'll get back to that sermon called my father's first this is the second time i was prepared to preach it and god said no so all right jesus help me lord so matthew chapter 26 starting with verse 24 if you're there in your bible say amen, amen. if you're still looking say wait pastor reading out of the rustic language of the king james it says when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then I answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head. And in a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. This is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of our God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to preach this morning the sufficiency of his blood. The sufficiency of his blood. Y'all let everybody know, sweet. We got a change in here, a change. The sufficiency of his blood. Say that to your neighbor real quick. Look him in the face and say, the sufficiency of his blood. Turn to your other neighbor on the other side and say, his blood is sufficient to cover my sins pray with me and stay with me most recently the news reported the story of a 42 year old white woman from nashville tennessee who went back to school to earn her high school diploma she was a fifth or sixth generation racist the prodigy of slave masters who still saw black folks as objects, Jews as the enemy, minorities as her inferior. Uh, in the interviewed, she spewed an ugly hate for everyone other than white folk. But the story got interesting when her Mexican biology teacher requested the entire class to take an ancestry test. Do I have a witness? An ancestry test which required each one of them to take, a, take two swabs of saliva and put it in a tube and mail it to this ancestry tracking system and tracking company. Several weeks Later, the results came back to the class, and when they came in, this racist Tennessee woman 
had a breakdown of her blood. And the breakdown went like this. 36% German, 37% West African, 15% Spanish European, 6% French, 4% Jewish, and 2% Chinese. The test did not only tell her what was in her blood, but it also told her what was who was in her blood. And so we all need to be careful today about who we don't like and who we don't want in our country and what walls we want to build to keep immigrants out. We all need to be come, uh, careful because uh, our blood tells us we are more than what we see and who we see in the mirror. Uh, our blood tells us we are interconnected through Adam. That's the first Adam, if you will. And here in the text, we find the second Adam who had the blood of the world in his veins, which qualified him to die for the entire world. Uh, we find in the text this pre-existent logos, the word made flesh. Do I have a witness? Uh, the one who was with the Father and Spirit in creation, the one through whom the world was made, uh, being sentenced to be crucified on the crux emessa or the Latin cross. Uh, you must understand this is the same Jesus who on Monday Thursday uh, instituted the Holy Communion and told them to drink his blood. He asked them to do something that they as Jews had never done because Jews were forbidden to drink blood since Leviticus 17, 10, 14 told them so. They would be violating an ancient religious taboo. And so even though blood paid an important part in worship of God's temple in Jerusalem, God strictly forbid them to drink the blood from the animal. And so we had the one who was telling them that one day they would have to drink of, of his blood on the cross or moving toward the cross uh, to shed his blood because he knew that there was sufficiency in his blood. Oh, y'all going to help me preach it in a minute. Uh, I don't know about you, but it seems like everybody is occupied with discussions about blood. Uh, broken up lovers on talk shows are trying to determine the baby's blood type to trace it back to the real father. Father pharmaceutical companies keep pushing new blood pressure pills to black folk to regulate their systolic and diastolic numbers that help jack them up with pesticide from the farmers that gave it to them. The rotating wheel of dialysis machine is active in many of our families in an attempt to clean and purify family members' blood. Uh, the Justice Department said uh, last all week they're going to keep reopening cases and setting falsely accused black folk and Latin folk uh, free because their blood spoke up out of, of, on their behalf of their innocence through the DNA technology. Untold violence and murder and the shedding of blood is consuming the news media. War and rumors of war is telling us there's a lot of blood being shed. Excessive blood alcohol levels in athlete entertainers and all these so-called role model models is sending folk into prison, out of careers, and into the grave. Uh, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of talk about the blood, but it seems like the church is not talking about the blood. Uh, all this bad news about violence and the shedding of innocent blood in our streets and churches, schools and communities in a world where blood sucking vampires are becoming heroes and chemicals are be, uh, being shot in our blood to escape problems. The church is not talking about the blood. One would think the church who has good news about the blood that was shed, good news about the blood that was washes away sin, good news about the blood that heals a sin sick soul, uh, the church that had good news about blood shed on God Gotha's hill, good news about the blood caused demons to tremble, uh, vampires to run, witches to cut their se seances, madams to shut their reading cards down, a blood that causes dope dealers to stop peddling, a blood that caused street walkers to love their bodies, crack actors to drop their vows, rappers to stop cursing, liars to stop lying, whoremongers to stop whoring. Would you say something about some blood? When we, got the, when we got the key to the world to talk about his blood, we don't even want to preach about his blood. 
The church is talking about prosperity, not blood. The church is talking about favor, not blood. The church is talking about buildings, not blood. The church is talking about meetings, but not blood. And you want to want to know why they're shedding blood? Because the church ain't talking about no blood. The church ain't talking about no blood. And, and I believe all of us is in need of a blood, a blood sacrifice and savior. And all of us is in need uh, of a savior who shed his blood. Because guess what? You and I are a sinner in need of a savior. Uh, uh, you, you, you don't think you need any blood? Well, you, you lie, you cheat, you steal, you gossip, you curse, you backbite, you two-time, you kill, you manipulate, you sleep around, you fornicate, you adulterers, you sleep with the same sex, you polyphile, you drunk, you worship with other gods, you put other things before God, you outburst of wrath, you play with demons and witches, her heresies, on and on, on. And all of us are in need, I'm trying to tell you, uh, of a savior to remove the penalty of death we deserve because of our sin. And nobody, including the pastor, is without sin. Uh, the genesis of your life and the revelation of your life uh, says you need some blood. Uh, uh, don't, don't feel bad. Uh, uh, you're not the only sinner. You are in great company because Cain killed Abel. Jacob cheated Isaac. Moses, Moses killed the Egyptian. Noah got drunk. Balaam was disobedient. Samson chose the wrong wife. David stole another wife. Peter cursed folk out. Matthew was an extortioner. James and John was hotheads. Simon was a revolutionary. Mark was a cop out. Timothy was a failure. Judas was a keepsake, backbiter, thief, and a murderer. And you and I are still are sinners. I, I don't know about you, but I'm glad uh, that love, the love of God covers a multitude of sin. And because he loved us, here we are on Communion Sunday, reminding us his love reaches the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. I'm saying love connect, connected with the blood of Jesus. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm glad his blood can get to the highest of mountains. Because uh, even when I get snoozy and full of myself, he'll reach my snoozy self uh, but when I feel low down to the ground and, and don't handle my business right his blood reaches low down I don't care how low down gutter down from the guttermost to the uttermost the blood reaches down there too uh, you've been doing some crazy things you've been acting a fool I'm here to tell you the blood will reach you where you at all we need today is to know there's sufficiency in his blood uh, you are not too lost to be found too low down to be lifted too far out to be brought in too dirty to be washed too hungry to be filled too thirsty to be satisfied too soiled to be saved too in danger to be rescued or too repulsive to be redeemed I don't care what your name is the blood can find you and cleanse you and make the wrong right yeah the blood can do its work in you anybody glad about it uh, I, I, our old dean of preachers who passed on bless his memory uh, Gardner Taylor says when will uh, the church uh, fools stop talking about faith of Christ as something soft and innocent our faith is not about this innocent, uh, nice, soft thing. Our faith is, is not a hot house of faith of somewhere, never, never land of innocent contemplation. But it says the church of Jesus Christ was not born in a quiet ivory tower, isolated and insulated in protected reflection. But if you read the text that I gave you today, you'll see that the church was born in bloodshed and brutality. There was nails there, spears and hammers and lies, uh, curses and gambling and deep, dark betrayal. Uh, our church was shaped around the brutal cru cru cruelty of the most ruthless empire the world has ever known more ruthless than Hitler's day uh, it was the Roman Empire and the Gospel of John tells us that many Jews who once was disciples was disgusted at the in insistence on the need to drink his blood Jesus was telling them you you will drink my blood and they and they were talking about thinking about cannibalism but he was saying this is my blood and my blood is sufficient to cleanse you from all sin and there's no sin big enough to supersede my blood and so when you get in a bunch of trouble and the devil accuse you say I know I didn't do right but look at his blood when the devil say you are no good for 
for nothing say I know I ain't good for nothing but look at his blood when he tells you you a pimp and a hustler you say yes but I'm saved and look at his blood when he tell you that, that you're no good and you'll be a two timer all your life but you got saved sanctified and filled with the Holy and say look at my blood when he says you a dope dealer and you got dope in your system say yeah I did that too but look at his blood he tell you a whore and you walking around the street say yeah I did it but his blood can wash away my sin his blood could wash away my sin I, I I feel running in my shoes but my legs said don't you run Negro uh, but, but I feel like I want to run this morning because I'm so glad that the blood cleansed me of all the crazy things that I did yesterday today and listen forevermore the devil can't accuse you until he can get through the blood and he can't get through it thank you Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Tell your neighbor, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank him. Come on, come on. High five your neighbor. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him, thank him. Ooh, ooh. And that's why every time we come on communion Sunday and you sometime drag here the first Sunday, you would think even first Sunday it'd be packed up just to remember what Jesus did on Calvary for your sins and my sins. Maybe you didn't really sin too bad or you too cute. You never really uh, 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 did anything so deep and you don't really need to come and remember. But I don't know about you. When first Sunday come I'm trying to run the church just to remember what God did for me he said this is my blood oh, oh I feel like preaching this morning this is my blood he is saying listen devil my blood is sufficient to cover a multitude of sins you see, uh, we gather every first Sunday. It should be noted that Satan and every demon in hell has an epileptic fit every time we do communion. You see, they don't want us to lift the cup in memory. Uh, the enemy don't want us to remember who we are. The enemy don't want us to know the power that's in the blood. The enemy don't want us to know that we are the redeemed of the Lord. The enemy don't want us to remember uh, what Christ did on the cross. The enemy don't want us to remember the power that resides in every Christian. The enemy don't want us to remember that we can walk on serpent's head. The enemy don't want us to remember the anointing that comes through the blood the enemy don't want us to say this is my blood and it's sufficient it will handle anything you got bring it on Satan bring it on bring 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 bring, bring, bring it on bring 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 it on oh I feel every time the deacons get around the table and I pass a tray to my right and pass it to my left I'm passing a memory that has so much power and sufficiency and they don't realize demons that have been creeping at your door at night it starts trembling because they get an epileptic fit because they say now that negro is coming back home remembering what the blood done for them remembering how the blood was shed on Calvary's tree oh God huh? oh God yeah yes mm -hmm. yeah yes you see when you read about it you understand even the enemies were planted at the table where Jesus stood but they couldn't stop Christ's destiny at his table and they can't stop Christ's destiny in you and me at our table uh, and at your table at home and at the tables when you bless your food and, and everywhere you go because when a Christian goes uh, from the west from the east to the north and the south the blood stills cover them there uh, when a Christian goes up and goes down goes all around the blood still covers them even there anybody this morning is happy that the blood is covering them have you thought about some of the wretched things you done in your life and snuck out and God forgave you because he shed his blood for you Oh, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes God reminds me of the wretchedness, the things that I've done that I can't tell nobody. But hey, 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 the blood covers that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
And so in the checks there, a uh, Good Friday is hanging there. They're in Good Friday atonement, and they know that the spotless Lamb of God is shedding his blood in the text for the remission of sin. The blood is even there starting to work against the enemy. Yeah, the blood from the whippings and the, the blood from the scourging, the blood from the nails that, uh, that were on the end of the whips and the bones that were at the end of the whip that took skin off of Jesus. But the blood was already working then. The blood uh, that was there when they pressed the 72 thorns uh, uh, into his head uh, to prepare to move him to Golgotha, uh, that blood was already working even then. The blood uh, from the piercing on the side where blood and vinegar came out of the side the blood was still even working there the, the blood that was in one hand on the right and in the other hand on the left the blood was still working then the, the blood that was put uh, from the nails uh, uh, in his foot uh, the blood was still working then and the blood was working then and the blood is working now know who I'm here but God sent me here and said you can't preach that other message because somebody is here is in a fight and they feel like giving up they feel backed up against the wall they don't know if they're going to make it they got so much bad news in one week it got them cornered but I want you to know you are already victorious in Christ just do what I'm doing sometimes you got to swing the blood Swing that. Put the blood over your house. Swing that blood. The blood over mama. Swing that blood. The blood over your children. The blood over the shirt. Swing that blood. Blood over my house. Swing that blood. The blood over my future husband. Swing that blood. The blood over my knee. Swing that blood. The blood can heal. The blood can deliver. The blood can work. The blood is sufficient to do its work. Oof. Mira poshanda la boseta. Esa. Who is it? You about to give up. Don't give up. Don't go back to your job and stop swinging blood. Go in your office and swing some blood. I say, Satan, the blood is against you in the name of Jesus. Hey, Baba Sata. My God. Herod and Pilate are washing their hands. Don't miss it in the text. He comes and they, act, they bring the bowl to him and he washes his hands of the blood. And he's saying, he's thinking, I'm innocent because we're killing an innocent man and he's washing his hands of Jesus' blood, not realizing he needed to dip his hand in, in that blood. <laughs> And they, and they say, oh, yeah, you wash your hands. Let the blood be upon us and our children. And I'm so glad they got it right. <laughs> they didn't know they were getting it right because they, they thought they were doing what was right. But sometimes you're doing wrong and God, it was like a crooked stick hitting something straight, is making it right in spite of you. Have God made some things right in spite of you? When you know you were doing wrong, he did something in spite of you to bless you, in spite of you to open the door, in spite of you to heal you in spite of you oh God thank you the text shines a spotlight on the blood that circulates from Genesis to Revelation oh this text has all types of shadows and prototypes and foreshadowings of his blood and metaphors and imposters and even uh, exposes weak substitutes right there in the text and if any of you who are theologues and uh, Christian educators, if you follow the blood trail from Genesis to Reg Revelation, it'll change your mind and teach you how to swing the blood at all kinds of hell that's coming at you. 
Uh, and when I read this Bible, the basic instructions before leaving earth, I realize it indeed is a bloody book. Because Adam and Eve found in their sin and made coats of skin to cover up their newfounded nakedness. Blood spilt. Cain slew Abel in the field because Abel's blood offering from the animal he raised was about what, what God really wanted. The Bible says Abel gave a more excellent sacrifice and God honored by God Cain's offering from the ground that was cursed and produced out of his own efforts. The second son, the shepherd, dies because the first son sinned, foreshadowing of what Adam got me into and what Jesus got me out of. That was blood spilt. And let me interject and say parenthetically, don't ever come to church without an offering. Mm -hmm. uh, you better make sure you come with a warm blood offering. Somebody say warm blood offering. What, what do you mean, Pastor Maxwell? I'm saying don't, don't, don't sit like a dead log on the ground or, or in the pew. Uh, you better come with a sacrifice of praise and with the fruit of praise on your lip. Uh, with some clapping in your hands and dancing in your feet. And some people don't realize what it really means. Because uh, the more you praise God, the, the more you lift them up. See, what, what? the more I begin to dance in the spirit, the heart rate begins to pick up. The more I begin to give it up for God. But while I'm sitting there on the pew, the heart is going down and the blood is getting slower. But I begin to give a blood offering when I begin to praise God. The harder I praise him, the blood offering gets serious. The harder I lift my hands, the blood offering gets intense. The more I sing choir, the blood offering gets for real. And the more I give him a wave offering, the more energy I use and my heart rate goes up and I begin to give God a sacrifice of praise. That's what that really mean you got to bring a blood offering when you come to church don't come to church to look cute come to church to praise him to give him a blood offering oh to preach your word give him an offering that he's worthy to be praised I know, I know you praise God like a professional with your high sedity self. You like sitting there with your hands folded close, close to the ground. But excuse me, I'm trying not to dance on your toes and shout on your silence. I got to praise my God because uh, I got to spill some blood this morning. I got to praise the God because there's a voice in my brother's blood crying out in the streets of my neighborhood. Uh, I got to give him a blood offering to separate left life from death for the foreshadowing of God. I got to leave me a blood trail. And if you really want to leave a blood trail, you ought to praise him. Because when you let the praise go up, the blood begins to be all around you. Give him a sacrifice of praise. Is there a sacrifice of praise? Is there a sacrifice? Oh. There's blood everywhere how dare we not have a praise in our mouth there's blood all over the good book moses killing of the egyptian then leads the people out of egypt after a bloody night where the blood of lambs was put on doorposts of israelites homes so the death angel will be passed over blood spilt everywhere levitical book blood sacrifices of bulls and goats and sheep and dove blood Every, everywhere without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sin but that only pacified God pacified him with bullocks and goats and ships sheep and doves that was only a pacification but it didn't satisfy and there's difference between pacify and satisfy uh -huh. yeah I, when I pacify you it's momentary probably last five seconds I'm going somewhere I'll leave it alone though <laughs> yeah yeah but when you Satisfies. Yeah. Yes, I, when you satisfy, God knows how to satisfy you. Uh, he knows how to complete the move of God. Does anybody know you satisfied in Jesus this morning? God satisfied the penalty for your death. God satisfied the sin. He shed his 
both, all the lambs, the goats, the bullocks stood not, could not resolve the sin issue. Only the blood of the spotless lamb of God could satisfy the sin predicament of the world. I, I like the way Hebrew says it. He went in once for all by himself with himself. He was the only priest who was the offerer and the offering. He went in by himself and perfected forever them that are sanctified. Then turned around and received what was being offered up uh, because he is Alpha and Omega first and last beginning and end then turn around and receive what was offered can't nobody do me like Jesus uh, that's the only God I know who can be the sacrifice the priest and the recipient all at the same time can't nobody do me like Jesus uh, nobody can do me like again and again over and over the veil of the temple is a ram skin the ark covered with the uh, the ark is a ram skin there's altar soaked with blood uh, david hands was saturated with blood and could not build the temple prophets were martyred for preaching blood spilt everywhere herod murdering of children trying to find the messiah the woman with the issue of blood john head placed on a platter as to a lustful dance blood there's a blood trail everywhere and based on that fact alone when Jesus takes the blow of death on your behalf because he loves you and loves me there's no need for me to get weak need. I got to deal with that troublemaker demon that keeps coming. Jesus is arch enemy Satan and all his Pharisees that come with him because they wanted Christ to die and they felt that his death would end it, but his death started it up. some power and here I did it again I'm gonna throw this thing once in them for all I keep hitting it everywhere but I can't believe it you don't know what I'm talking about the, the, the death they thought it would end it all but no it just began it all it unleashed blood covering saints everywhere they were worried about the, the son of God that one a uh, blood giving God but because he died on the hill called Golgotha, uh, the blood uh, now is covered for every saint. Uh, every saint of God is covering blood everywhere they go. Uh, every room you go in, every door you open, every car door you sit in, every hospital door you go in, every funeral parlor you move in, any place you go is a blood-stained Christian right there. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm blood-stained this morning, uh, blood-washed this morning, blood-cleansed this morning everywhere I go I don't gotta fear nobody I don't gotta back down from nobody when you go in the courtroom bring the blood with you or when you go in the doctor's room the blood is with you or when you go out of this church room the blood is with you why are you preaching the blood this morning because you need to be reminded who you are and what is covering your life there's power in the blood wonder working power uh, Jesus was healing the sick and raising the dead, uh, standing out there in graveyards, uh, calling dead men to come out from the church service so they can come leap and dance, uh, standing in graveyards, calling the demoniac legions of demons to even come out of boys. Uh, storms that Jesus spoke to was slain in the spirit. Uh, he walked on the chaos of water and the people lies. Uh, they, had, they had to have him dead, but they had no oh, idea what his blood really meant. Hell had no idea what fury was being released. You're going to kill my Jesus? You're going to kill my Lord? So when Jesus dies on the cross, he shook up the elements. Uh, the Bible says he tore up the dispensations. Uh, he ripped up the ages. Uh, he et let eternity begin to shimmer and shake. Uh, sunlight fell asleep and the veil was ripped in half. Uh, settled for sin and issue for the sanctified. The Bible says the enemy was foolish when they crucified their Lord. They should have let Jesus keep on healing and blessing but they crucified him. And like Sam and Samson, he destroyed more enemies, destroyed more demons, broke more yokes, free more souls, open more eyes, raise more dead. Uh, in his death, 
that he did in his life. Uh, he shed his blood that I might be covered and, and listen, not just covered, but in covenant and connected to him. I'm not just covered to him, I'm connected to him in covenant. And I don't know about you, because covenant says nobody can mess with me unless you mess with my daddy. You better be careful how you handle the, the, the children of God. You better be careful how you curse people out who are the children of God. When you curse somebody who's saved and sanctified out, you messing with the blood. You better be careful the way you speak to saints of God and rumor and gossip about saints of God. Because you're speaking to the blood that's covered them. Because you can't get to me unless you get through the blood that covers me. His blood is sufficient. His blood, his blood, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, this morning I am thankful and reminded of the sufficiency of your blood. There's nothing lacking, there's nothing weak, there's nothing diluted, there's nothing convoluted. It does its work repetitively in my life and today I'm glad to be a Christian in my heart. I'm glad God that you made me a Christian through your work on Calvary. I'm glad to be one of the childs of God to have an inheritance so I can go with you one day and take over the world with you. I'm glad God about your blood I would not be anything I'm glad to be a bloody preacher I'm glad to be a bloody saint I'm glad to be a bloody man I'm glad to be a bloody person thank you Jesus thank you Jesus father I thank you even as I pray this prayer I'm thinking about the days I will not even look at the doctor while they draw my blood out of my veins because I hate needles and I hate giving blood but God I got delivered today I'm going to watch my blood come out because there's history in that blood there's family in that blood there's salvation oh god i thank you that your blood covers me which makes my blood precious and worth something in this world thank you jesus that your blood is the only blood that can wash away sin God, I bless you, and I thank you, and it is my prayer that this offering is all that you wanted me to do on this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. God is trying to convince us and remind us that we're much more than we realize in him not of our own selves so if you're in here and you're carrying heavy burdens maybe you've been running away from the church because you don't understand why you should come to this sacred place even on first Sunday to be reminded of what our Christ did for you giving his life and shedding his blood that you would have an opportunity listen to have eternal life there's no reason to fear nothing anymore. You have yeah. eternal life. Nobody can take it away from you. But if you're in this room and you never personally confess your sins to our Father, never personally accepted Jesus Christ into your heart and recognized him as your Savior and your Lord, today is your day. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, <laughs> all of your voice all of your energy use it to confess say Jesus I believe you died for my sins rose again on the third day with all power in your hand 
sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for me, covering me every day with your shed blood. I believe it, I believe it, and I'm ready to receive it. I'm ready to accept it. I'm ready to step out by faith. If you've done that already, but you still have not have a church home, maybe you need to cross over to the other side. No, we are not perfect church, but God is a perfect God. Church is like a hospital where the sick comes to get healed. In fact, it's better than a hospital because the healing that we have is greater than anything a hospital could ever have. So if you're in this place today, you don't have a church home or you've never been saved, step out of your seat and let the blood of Jesus cover your life. It is the only thing sufficient enough to keep you and destroy the works of the enemy.